While the Chicago Bulls have not made a ton of move-in free agencies, their moves have indicated something. They look to solve their simple math problem in adding two players from free agency that add in tons of three-point shooting. We're going to talk about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm your host here, Hayes. You can follow the channel right off the top at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform. I also want to remind everybody, Bull, uh, Chicago Bulls Central is a bit free and available on every podcasting app of your choice, as well as YouTube if you're listening on the podcast side. So make sure you guys can go and support both areas. But let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So the Chicago Bulls have made two free agent signings as well as re-signing two of their own free agents. And one thing is clear is that the Bulls are looking to do exactly what AK said in the season-ending press conference, and that is change the shot profile of the Chicago Bulls. You look at their acquisition yesterday of Torrey Craig, right? And then when you pair that in with already signing Javon Carter, what that means is that the Chicago Bulls have added Two players that, yes, are modern as far as the way that they play defense, but as well as the number of attempts they take from the three-point line. When you look at the number of attempts that Torrey Craig adds, 3.2 attempts per game. Javon Carter, 4.2 three-point attempts per game. When you look at the fact that that in, while Patrick Williams did lead the Chicago Bulls in in three-point percentage last year, when you look at what would happen uh, uh, with, with these players, Javon Carter would have actually led the Chicago Bulls with three-point shooting percentage, and Torrey Craig would have ranked number three, right? So that means that our best three-point shooters per percentage would have been uh, Javon Carter, Patrick Williams, and Torrey Craig. And so when you when we've heard AK talk about changing that shot profile and how important it is, right, they've gone out and, uh, and gotten players that are role players, yes. What, they're not the knock-it-out-the-park signings. They aren't the home-run signings that, you know, the big-name signings that some Bulls fans would have wanted, but they do add a skill level that is much needed for the Chicago Bulls team. And when you look also at the modernization a little bit of the roster, yes, Javon Carter, again, is not a player that's going to take a lot of shots or has not in his NBA career, but the fact of the matter is how he plays, the point of attack defense from him and Torrey Craig are both going to be drastically needed for the Chicago Bulls. The fact of the matter is, right now, the Chicago Bulls have gone out and they've made signings that help the team in the areas that they needed. Were they the big name? Were they superstar signings? No, but that could pay off huge for the Chicago Bulls. So many games last season, and we talked about it here, right? There are a lot of new subscribers to the channel, so if you guys are new to the channel, during the season, I typically try to do um, post, or not try, I do post-game shows after every game, and there were so many games in which the Chicago Bulls made the same amount of field goal attempts as their opponent, but they still lost that game just because of the nature we did not take very many three-point shots. What we've done now, by adding the three-point shooters that we have, we've helped change that shot profile pretty significantly just with two players that that project to be parts of the Bulls' rotation. And the Bulls still have other moves that they can do, which we'll talk about here in a second, but overall, The fact of the matter is, is that you can tell that AK's focus was adding three-point shooting. And what this also does, right, is that in adding Javon Carter as as what he is for the three-point shooter, and I still think he's going to be the starter at the point guard position, and if you look around most uh, bull sites right now projecting that depth chart, do have Javon Carter starting at point guard, is that that hopefully allows now a player like Nikola Vucevic, who has taken more threes than what has been forced to kind of just by the nature of they needing somebody to stretch the floor is that now hopefully is going to add a, a let Vooch do a little bit more of what he does naturally. We've already heard that Nikola Vucevic has talked uh, to the Bull staff and Billy Donovan about how he's used. That was one of the things in the negotiation. So the Bulls changing their shot profile is is huge, right? And I'm not saying that the acquisitions that Javon Carter and Torrey Craig are these huge signings per se, right? But they can be very impactful signings for the Chicago Bulls. Now, it all has to come down and be seen on the basketball court, which means we also have to trust that Billy Donovan is going to actually run an offensive system that are going to use his players to the best of their ability. But when you look at what seems to be on the horizon for the Chicago Bulls, adding Torrey Craig as a 3 and D threat. Yes, Torrey Craig, one uh, year of shooting close to 40% from three. That was last season. But otherwise, he's still been a solid three-point shooter. 
right? Javon Carter. And I've seen a lot of you guys ask, hey, well, Javon Carter benefited from Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's not going to do that here. Go and look at Javon Carter and how he shot well from three before he was even with the Milwaukee Bucks and then even after joining the Milwaukee Bucks and how well he still shot the three in games that Giannis was not playing. The fact of the matter is, Javon Carter is a legit three-point threat. Torrey Craig is still a threat to shoot the three-pointer, hasn't been a huge volume and high and high percentage three-point shooter his whole career, but at the, fa the fact of the matter still remains, he's still been somebody who has, has not been reluctant to shoot the three-ball over his career and has done a pretty damn good job at doing it, right? Pretty solidly there from three. His career three-point numbers, as some of you guys pointed out after me talking about uh, Javante Green and how I would have liked Javante to still stay here, is that fact of the matter is, Torrey Craig has been a better three-point shooter over his career at a better percentage than what Javante has been. So the Bulls have added legit three-point shooting to a team that needs it. How it's going to work out with this version of the roster, that remains to be seen, of course. But the Bulls are doing what they can. And considering the, the confines that they came into this free agency with, they, we came in knowing and understanding the Bulls were only going to have the mid-level exception to operate with primarily. You get Torrey Craig at a vet minimum contract, which is a very good deal, and it's a player option in the second year, but then you also get Javon Carter at below the mid-level exception, well below what also he was projected to make in free agency. And what does that all add into? The Bulls have made smart, strategic acquisitions per what they need, right? Is it? I know that Bulls fans, I mean, I know that basketball fans, this is not just Bulls fans, it's fans from all over. Basketball fans in general, we are trained to look at the name that's attached, right? If it's not a big name, we typically don't think that, it, that it's an acquisition that can be impacted. But the fact of the matter is, is that those in-between players, those players that do play roles, role players are hugely important. Go look. You, you will not find a team that has done anything meaningful that the role players have not stepped up. And especially for a Bulls fan base that sat, that sat there and talked about, why can't we be the Miami Heat? Look at how many undrafted players that they have, whatever else. It's not always about the names. It's about the fit. Now, we have to still see the fit, right? And I want to be clear there. I'm not saying that by any stretch of the imagination, we should just assume we had a Torrey Craig, we had a Javon Carter, we brought back Nikola Vucevic, we brought back Kobe White, we good. I'm not saying that. But the Bulls, at least in what they've done now, yes, fairly quiet, not huge, not home run hits, but they've made very strategic acquisitions that come in with a skill set that's much needed. Torrey Craig, legit size, right? Yes, I know there are going to be some people, since when is 6'7 a legit size? 6'7 is a forward in today's league, period, right? But somebody who's come in with defensive versatility that can guard the three or the four position, and probably even more than that when you look at switching and the, the switchability, and also a player that is a veteran. Somebody who comes in with over 70 games of playoff experience, playoff experience that we are surely missing on the Chicago Bulls team. Javon Carter, bringing in a skill set that we need at a position that we need. We saw, have seen how this team plays differently when they have a point guard available. That's all I'm saying, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you guys on this being the most amazing thing and that the Bulls are all settled and everything's done, but I am trying to be realistic in saying this. The Chicago Bulls have gone out and they've done things and, they've, and they had a vision, and it seems like at least for right now that they have done that in a way that, Hey, we'll see how it pays off. We'll see how it pays off. But I personally do think that these, these acquisitions thus far are going to work out, right? But it still, it still remains to be seen how everything's going to come together to see how far we're going to be able to go. Now, with that said, we're not done yet. The Bulls did file for the disabled player exception. It's not been approved yet. I want to keep that in mind, especially with the holiday now. By the way, happy 4th of July to everyone um, for those that celebrate. But with it now being or waiting on that disabled player exception. Uh, and it, it, it'll be approved. And I would, like I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if it's approved by, by the end of the week um, or before the end of the week. The Chicago Bulls have an additional $10.5 million in spending power. Right now, we have 12 guaranteed roster spots with still Io DeSumo and Marco Simonovic, uh, us waiting to see what's going to happen with those. If they both come back and sign with the Bulls, that leaves one remaining open roster spot for the Chicago Bulls, and they have still part of their mid-level exception. They still they will have the disabled player exception, which they may not use right away, right? I want to be clear here. The disabled player exception, it does expire at the end of the year. And because of that, you, you would think that the Bulls would want to get in a player to fill that spot 
at least as soon as possible, but they could look to wait to the trade deadline to, to maybe acquire a player into that disabled player exception. But I don't want to worry anybody. I don't want to send anybody down a spiral by saying that. I just want to be clear with the possibilities there. But with that said, right, the Bulls still have money that they can spend. And if they go out and spend that money correctly, um, we still can have talent to add to the team. Yes, I would still like, as I said before, a four slash five to come to the scene. Mo Bamba is definitely one. I wouldn't even mind a PJ Washington, depending on what's going on. It doesn't fit the four slash five, but again, another player that can help improve the Bulls shot profile. It doesn't change it, but those are some of the players that I would like the Bulls to look at. If that, again, we have a whole video on players that the Bulls could target with the disabled player exception. So make sure you guys check that out as well. But ultimately right now, the Bulls sit at a spot where they can still add to the team. And if they make the decisions to not bring back Marco Simonovic, if Io DeSumo ends up leaving the team, also Carly Jones, they don't have to decide on his roster spot until, I think, right before the season starts, but they could come out of his deal as well to open up an additional roster spot. The Bulls still have flexibility to try to continue to improve this team. The biggest question is, that, and that we all have, is are they going to do what's needed to get it done, right? They've made some steps. They made some ones that, and moves that are going to pay off for the team. And while I was not as, I'm still not as high on the Tory Craig signing as I was potentially Javon Carter, I'd be remiss if I did not admit and say that I can see where that fit could be for the team. And I hope that in watching him play and watching him fits in, I'm instantly like, oh no, this this is cool. I'm, I'm back high on it. Again, I'm not down on it. I'm just not as high on Javon as I am, as I was on the Javon Carter signing. They're doing they're they're making moves. They're trying to do what they can. And that was, and when you look at AK's press conference and saying changing that shot profile, they have absolutely changed that shot profile. When you look at now uh, players that can be legit threats from three-point range, Javon Carter, Zach Levine, uh, Kobe White, Tory Craig, Patrick Williams, right? We don't know what Dalen Terry is gonna be quite yet, right? Or if he's even gonna have a uh, get meaningful minutes on this team. But this team is they're trying, they're attempting it. And you know, hopefully. And what we see as this team starts to come together, you know, we'll see. We're still very guard heavy. So those concerns for any Bulls fan that had them are still very there and valid. And we'll end up seeing how it pays off for the team. Um, ultimately, I think this, right? I like what AK and Eversley are doing. I like the way that they are going about trying to add talent while also being fiscally responsible. And the fact of the matter is, as I talked about on yesterday's episode, they are, they are bringing in deals that are easily movable. They're bringing in deals that don't have long-term money necessarily attached to it to where you're now cash-strapped. And I still think that when you're looking at the Bulls' target, they still can have considerable spending power in 2024 and definitely in 2025. If that's kind of the next time they're targeting some free agents. So we'll see, right? We'll see. And now you guys know I've been trying to go to the voicemail bag as much as I can because you guys have been going off as expected during free agency, if I have not gotten to your text or voicemail, it does not mean I'm not going to get to it in the full mailbag episode. I'm just trying to alleviate how many uh, e uh, voicemails that we have by playing a couple or reading a couple of texts on every episode. But we got a voicemail today from Brian. We're going to go ahead and play that now. Hey, what's up, Hey, This is your boy Brian from the West Side. Uh, I kind of agree with you. I'm just whammed on the, the uh, signing the Bulls uh, just made with the D-Wing player. Um, I'm cool with it, but like you said, like, we got Javante Green. It's like, uh, unless he's, he's too hurt to play, we could just sign him back because I love his energy, and the Bulls play much better when Javante Green is on the court with the starters or the bench. They play better, and the energy he brings, the speed of the game. But I, so far, I like the fact that we didn't break up the team. I, I know a lot of people keep saying tr trade DeMar DeRose and all this shit. Bro, DeMar is a dog in this league. And he's pretty much, to me, one of the faces of the league. Really, you don't get rid of a player like that. I know he has some some issues like far defense or whatever, but when teams play the Bulls, they, they don't look at just we going to play Zach Levine. We're going to you know, they have to stop DeMar, too. So you want that. as a, You want that type of player on your team, you know, and he makes, he's good with the rookies. But as far as all the moves the Bulls are making so far in this free agency, I like, I like, I like the moves. It's the, it's, it's the coach. Because I think the Bulls could have played a lot of, lot better last year with this team with a better coach. So to me, the moves are good. They was, they was cool last year. It's, it's Donovan, man, I'm worried about. It's Donovan. Is he 
you're going to use these players. They coming in, you're getting veteran players, better players. They coming in here. Are you going to use them the right way? That's my only issue right there is the coaching problem. And I'm glad uh, Booch had that talk with him like, man, switch it up because against that playing thing with Miami, he could have scored 50 points. He was the biggest man on the fucking court. So uh, that's my thoughts on that. And I want, want to know what you think about that. All right, so Brian brings a uh, concern that a lot of Bulls fans, I think, admittedly would have, right? Billy Donovan. Um, as far as Javante Green, you know, I feel you there. But as far as Billy Donovan, that is one of the biggest concerns here, right? And I think as Bulls fans, uh, we all feel it, like, right? Regardless of what and improvements are made to this roster, is Billy Donovan going to use everybody to their skill set, right? That's been my biggest gripe with Billy Donovan. Yeah, the, you know, taking players out when they're hot and not going to Vooch, uh, as uh, in second halves after he was having pretty good first halves, those are absolutely issues and and great issues. But more so than anything, the one glaring thing about Billy Donovan is the lack of defensive adjustments, and on top of that, how he just does not use players to what their strength is. Zach Levine is one of the elite catch and shoot players in the NBA. We barely run catch and shoot situations for him. Nikola Vucevic is one of the best pick and pop, pick and roll players, not three point range, but operating in that. That high post to low post area, we don't typically go there. We turned him into a three-point shooter his whole first, well, first full season here. And then last year, we kind of started coming around to it, but we didn't use him in second halves. Patrick Williams, he gets no plays called for, right? DeMar DeRozan basically gets to do DeMar DeRozan, but he's primarily the only one. Lonzo Ball, we basically use him as a, as a catch-and-shoot player too. The, the fact of the matter is, Billy Donovan, and, and, and not having faith in your head coach, it really does completely... Uh, uh, change in color how you look at the rest of the roster, right? Because if you don't have a coach that is going to utilize and 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 build their system around the strengths of their players, it becomes a little bit glaring just how how much he gets out coached at times. So I hope that that improves for for him. I I really hope that Billy Donovan comes into this year looking at what we have. have we we can have a more uh, modern day type shot profile. So hopefully Billy Donovan sees that and he makes those necessary adjustments. And we're looking at things differently this year. That's what I hope, right? Not necessarily just saying that that's for sure what we're going to get, but I definitely hope that that's the case. And we'll end up seeing. I, I have big concerns about Billy Donovan. I think a lot of Bulls fans do too. But I think ultimately it's going to come down to this. What does, if, as Billy Donovan, it, does he grow? Does that continuity again, does it grow him as a coach and, and get, get him to wake up in some of the things that he does, right? I don't know how much faith you guys have on it. My faith is kind of middling with that, um, but, you know, it kind of is what it is there. But before we go, I got another text message as well that I want to get to before we go from this. And this one is from uh, the 312, and he says this. Is there still a path for the Bulls to sign Mo Bamba? Yeah, we still have our mid-level, ex- or part of our mid-level exception. We still have that designate, that disabled player exception if it comes through. So, yeah, there's absolutely potential there for the Bulls to still add Mo Bamba. And I still think when you look at Mo Bamba playing the 4-5 role, that will allow Tory Craig to be like having versatility off your bench is one of the most important things. Bench players that can play multiple positions. So I think there's there's definitely a path for that. We'll end up seeing what the Chicago Bulls do with that the the uh, disabled player exception, but there is still a path. It's the, the window's not closed. And for those that ask as well, the window's not closed on Io DeSumo returning either. We'll ultimately see the Bulls. I think I think things will be a little bit more clear once we reach. We got three more days to find out what's going on with Marco Simonovic. If Marco's contract is not fully guaranteed and they come off of that on, on July 7th, then we kind of know, hey, they're opening up another roster spot and they're probably going to use it to run something. So we end up seeing that. We'll see. We'll see, man. That's all I can really say on that one, man. But thank you guys so much, man, for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you follow the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, for our mailbag episodes, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See you right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.